Hello and welcome to our online service uh, for today. Uh, and it's good to join together, isn't it, in the Lord's name. Uh, we are meeting in person in church now. So those uh, services are back on 9, 11 and 6.30 on a Sunday and 11 o'clock on a Thursday. But it's good to join together if we're not able to. Uh, I'm feeling uh, like maybe we want to catch up of what we've already heard on a, a Sunday. It's good to join together. We'll get the same message uh, through the week. Um, and today we're thinking of Ezekiel 37, a great passage from the Bible. Some words to start with. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's good to join together and bring our worship to God. We're going to sing, Come People of the Risen King. We invite you to lift your voices with us as we sing this morning. Come. Come all and tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace. From the shifting shadows of the earth, we will lift our eyes to Him. Where steady arms of mercy reach to gather. Perfect love will never change 
And His mercies never cease But follow us through all our days With the certain hope of peace Rejoice, rejoice Let every tongue rejoice One heart, one voice O Church of Christ We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart that God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Confession will come upon the screen together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Blessed are you, God of all compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for our deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. 
We share in Psalm 130. If you join in the bold type, which come at the bottom of the screen. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning, more than the watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. More from the the Word of God this morning, as uh, we have Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 14 read. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life, and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone, we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just going to show it a short prayer as we think about that passage this morning from the scriptures. Gracious Father, as we open the words of uh, the Bible again and realise that you speak life into all sorts of circumstances that seem hopeless. Keep our eyes fixed on you despite what surrounds us. Help us to memorise the passages of the Bible that speak of the hope and be willing to share that with those in need. May we be agents of your Holy Spirit, breathing life into circumstances 
where you have placed us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sure you like watching uh, natural uh, history programs on the TV. I love, uh, I love it. Uh, when these uh, strange places in the, in the world where there is barren, inhospitable places suddenly spring to life when there's a little bit of rain that comes. When the rainy season arrives and the, the dust bowl and it looks like it's all death and you see animals panting and almost to exhaustion. And then there's maybe the odd skeleton dotted around of a, of a, a, a wildebeest that didn't make it or whatever it may be. And then the rain comes and within hours the place goes from a sort of dusty soil colour to beautiful green. Life comes and you see these time-lapse photography which happens only over a short time but the bursting of life that comes through. You know Ezekiel had a vision, a vision maybe from a lament which had come from the people of God. You get that a little bit in verse 11 from Ezekiel 37. The people had shouted, our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are cut off. They were in Babylon. Exiled from their homeland. Exiled from Jerusalem. Defeated, demoralized. Hope had dried up. It felt like their bones were dry as well. And spiritual as well as physical life had gone. What was going to be the Lord's answer to this cry of the people? And into it the Lord sends Ezekiel, doesn't he? And gives him this valley of the dry bones which they're going to think about today. And it's not just a, a word for the ancient uh, tribes 2,600 years ago. It's the same God we worship today. The same spirit who breathes life into God's people. The same word which is shared and brings hope. It's the same bringing back to life, which is the message all the way through the scriptures, isn't it? A message of hope. Three things to think about. Firstly, God speaks into hopeless situations. God speaks into hopeless situations. As the Lord takes Ezekiel in the vision uh, to this desolate valley, the, all they can see is bones. Not fresh bones, dry, dusty, long time down bones. And the Lord also doesn't give him uh, a wide angle view of it all. He goes in close, doesn't he? He goes in close. To see the bones, thinking about the people that they represented, the lives that they'd lived, the battles they'd fought, the loves they'd loved, like an ancient ossuary. And the Lord asked this strange question, can these bones live? He says to them, I suppose Ezekiel in his heart knew the answer was no, they're bones, aren't they? But he also knows the Lord is the great one. Only you know, Lord, he replies. He told Ezekiel to speak to the bones that they will have bodies again. I don't know about you, but sometimes our world, our nation, our communities, even our families are like a valley of dry bones, aren't they? Yes, physically, we're provided for, but spiritually, it seems like we've gone astray. We value things that really don't have much value. We think possessions uh, will cover the deep hole of sadness or longing in our lives. We think experiences will bring us the ultimate joy. We've pinned our hope on the false gods of our age. Money, power, experiences, whatever it may be. But it all falls flat. It leads to that dry bone experience. And the promise of the false gods, as ever, don't deliver. For Ezekiel, walking around these bones, it must have been a truly desolating experience. There can be no life here. It's a true wilderness. Maybe we've been a bit of that ourselves. Maybe we've been through that in our lives. Maybe we're going through it now. We worship a God of hope, though. And he brings that hope in a twofold message. To the bones. Firstly, the word of God builds up and restores. God speaks into those hopeless situation, and the word which He speaks builds up and restores. 
every day is. Well, I was getting, uh, reading a couple of passages from my Bible um, in the morning. I, I get a verse sent to me on my phone, usually with a lovely picture and the, the words of the scriptures within there. And it encourages, it challenges me, builds me up, searches me out. There is power in the word of God. That is so important, isn't it? Ezekiel speaks the word of God to the bones. He might have felt a bit of a fool, mightn't he? As he did it in the, uh, in the vision. But he had a deep sense of obedience too to what God wanted him to do. But as he did it, things happened. Signs of life returned. The rattling bones came together in the vision. They responded to the word of God. You know, that works out in our own lives as well. The word of God is so important. I think this works out at least two ways. Firstly, personally, as we read the scriptures, let the word sink deep into you. God gets to work in us as individuals as we come under his word. That's so why, why it's so important to, for Bible reading to be a part of a, our Christian walk individually and as a, a, a part of the character of our church. Christians are Bible people. And I know that over the past year the word of God has given me encouragement and I hope it's brought encouragement to you as well. It's felt at times like a valley of bones, isn't it, that we've been through. But God's word keeps speaking and brings hope to us. It works personally for us. Also, secondly, is that we can be agents of God's word. We can bring the word of God into different situations. Maybe a word of encouragement to lift someone. Maybe a card with a Bible verse on it. Maybe a text message with the word of God in it. These can be such blessings to those who receive them. We have such a powerful weapon at our disposal, don't we? In our spiritual armour, as Paul describes it, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Let's use it to build others up, to be a part of the language of our lives, is the Scriptures. So that people, when we speak to people, maybe we can just have that word from the Bible which comes to them. I know it happens to me uh, quite often actually where a word of God comes into mind a a phrase a verse from the scriptures a passage a story seems very apt let's be courageous enough to speak these words the bishop encouraged us last year didn't he to memorize verses from the scriptures so they have it to mind when the time comes the word of God builds and restores individually and also we can be agents of that in the world and and finally the spirit brings life this is 9 to 14 the spirit brings life in my arsenal of gadgets that i have at home i have a power kite and it is great fun to fly i've had it a good 10 12 years now it's made out of nylon cloth it's really strong It's got lots of lines on it at the top uh, and they sort of make the kite into an aerofoil uh, shape. So if you have it, it's a twin line kite. If you have it upwards like that, it is lifting you up all the time. It would never, well it'd have to be a very strong wind to take you up in the air. Um, But it's, it's great fun and it does feel like you're in a battle. If you've flown it for 20 minutes, you know about it. You're puffed out at the end of it all. And if you get it to fly low, across like that it will drag you across the beach it will drag you across the field it's done it to me a few a few times i tell you there is power in the wind isn't there ezekiel has spoken to the bones so that they come together but he also speaks to the breath the wind the spirit it's the same word ruach in the hebrew the breath the wind the spirit it's the same word that it comes about and enters in and reconstitutes these bodies and brings life. The word has power again, not only to build, but restores life as well as the spirit comes. People of God, people of God, we need God's word and God's spirit in our life. More and more. This is where true life is. This is where it is. As we come back together, start meeting together, I know that will not happen immediately, but over time it will happen. 
Let's pray for God's spirit to be at work in us. Bring him fresh life, fresh growth, fresh hope. And maybe the last year has been a year of dry bones that we've been through. We pray for God's word to be at work in us and his spirit to be at work in us. The word hope is a word that we use quite a lot, isn't it? Uh, And as we've gone through this worship in the wilderness series, worship despite our circumstances, a part of that is the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus. The restoration of God's people didn't happen immediately. It was completed for a generation or two, but it gave them hope that it would happen, this message from Ezekiel. And in a way, I can feel that happening for us as well. Great opportunities to share the hope we have with us. The message to those who are close to us. And also to pray for God's spirit to be at work in our lives and in the life of our church and in the life of our community. And the word of God and the spirit coming together is the full Christian experience. It's about knowing the Bible and scriptures, but also experiencing it and living it out as well. I think we need to be praying regularly for God's spirit to come, enliven us, especially as we we come out of lockdown and the weariness and the distress that it's all caused, that we might truly be a people of, of God in this place for his glory. This is a finish. The valley of dry bones was barren, dusty, full of death but there was hope coming and that was shared by Ezekiel to the people of God life was going to come from a desolate situation as we travel up to Easter and remember the wonderful hope that we have within us this is not just a future hope of glory which is a great hope in itself but there's a spiritual life that we can have in the here and now as well in the meantime God can bring his word and his spirit to his people, which seems like hopeless situations. God can be at work. May we be sharers of hope. May we be encouragers through the word. May we be those praying for the spirit to be at work in our lives, in our church, in our community, in the people around us. That God would be touching hearts Let me say a prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for the imagery of hope that you share with us through the valley of the dry bones. Lord, may your word instruct, guide, build up our lives. May your spirit come, O Lord, and enliven us. Inspire us and equip us in our life as your church here, Lord God, we pray. And as individuals where you've placed uh, us, May we be truly agents of the hope you have. May we be those who pray for your spirit to be at work. Help us, Lord God. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Direct our thoughts. Lead us as your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now going to be led into our next hymn. in God alone my rock and my salvation a fortress strong against my foes and I will not be shaken though lips may bless and hearts may curse and lies like arrows pierce me I fix my heart on righteousness I look to him who hears me
false temptations When evil seeks to take a hold I'll cling to my salvation Though riches come and riches go Don't set your heart upon them The fields of hope in which I sow
the words of the creed shall uh, come on the screen let's join together I believe in God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only Son O Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary he suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins resurrection of the body and the life everlasting Amen come to a time of prayer let us pray gracious Heavenly Father we pray for the needs of the world at this time remember those countries where there is sickness and plague and famine Lord God we know that you have enabled humanity to produce enough food to feed the world over again Lord give generosity to the hearts of those in positions of leadership that food would get through to those in need. Send your spirit of generosity, we pray. Pray for the leaders of our world that they would choose the paths of peace. A fruit of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. May they seek your paths and the common good. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for our own nation, remembering the Queen, the Prime Minister, and those in positions of leadership and authority. Pray for those locally who are elected to represent us, our MP, those local councillors. Gracious Father, as we've prayed for national leaders, we pray for our local leaders as well, that you'd grant them wisdom to make the right, right choices for our communities. And Lord, for all those in positions of, of, of authority, we pray that they would seek your wisdom, Lord God. That they would follow your paths. And that our nation would be led in the right paths. Lord God, we pray that the ways of our country would be your ways. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember our bishops, Julian, Philip and Jill. Strengthen them, we pray. Give them wisdom as they seek to lead our diocese and oversee us faithfully and well. Increase in them, Lord God, we pray. Godly wisdom. May they be continue to be faithful in prayer, in study of your word, in fellowship and encouragement. Bless them mightily, we pray. We pray for all Christian leaders that we will be faithful in sharing the good news of the, of the hope that there is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, may we uh, lead our people faithfully and well in the knowledge that we are under shepherds of you, Lord God. Pray for all Christian people, Lord God. Help them, Lord. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to enliven them strengthen them lord that we may know that your spirit leads us may he bear fruit in our lives pray in jesus name amen we pray for our community we thank you lord for the relative safety and security in which we live and we pray for the people of the streets of our village Lord we pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon their hearts may they be drawn closer to yourself Lord God bless them mightily we pray for our local schools we thank you that the children are beginning to settle back in we pray for the children at, at St Bernadette's at Millbrook at Sheverton Vale and at St Anne's also at the high school as well we pray that our children will be brought up in the right paths. Strengthen the teachers at this time of uh, change and flux, that you may 
Be with them, Lord God. Pray for our own head teacher, Miss France, Lord God, and and uh, Mr. Wright, the deputy. Strengthen the teachers at our school, the governors, uh, and those who oversee what goes on there. And Lord, we pray for the children of our school. May they receive the message of Christ well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray for those going through a time of sickness, of hardship, of injury. In the silence we'll lift to the Lord those known to ourselves who need his special touch at this time. Also remember those who are on our prayer board at church as well. Lord God, be with those who are going through times of sickness or sadness or injury. Bring them healing, Lord God, we pray. May medical professionals have the right, uh, make the right choices in their treatment. And for those who care for them, we pray for strength as they go through these times. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will grant them peace at this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Remember those who've lost loved ones over recent weeks as well. Maybe those mourning over the, the death of a loved one, over the, the, the dry bones of, uh, of the, of the uh, pandemic. Gracious Father, we pray that you would draw close to those who mourn. Bring them your peace. Bring them your blessing, we pray. And as they travel through that dark path, we pray that you would walk alongside them and bring them light and hope. In Jesus' name, amen. The collect or the special prayer uh, for this week. Gracious Father, you gave up your son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with us, you always. Amen. Let's join together in the words of the grace. Maybe thinking about those uh, members of our fellowship who were missing uh, face to face. We say together the, the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I'm going to finish with the, the great hymn, How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, God.
his son not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take Shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble. 